Good morning. I hope you're doing well, wherever you are. This indeed is the great day that God has made. And it's your job and my job to rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Alex Kimina, and allow me to welcome you to our morning devotion here at DCIU. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we come before you. We thank you, we love you, we give you praise and give you all the glory. Thank you so much for what you have done in our lives, O oh Lord. We don't take it for granted that, Lord, we are alive this day. And I don't take it for granted that, Lord, you have given us the ability to be able to move around, to walk around, to think, to breathe, and to even talk, O oh Lord. We don't take it for granted at all. We love you. We give you praise and we give you the glory. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this conversation. Be with us, guide us and protect us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen and amen. We have been dealing with the subject of pragmatic Christianity from Monday, and this is the last day of this topic. And uh, we've looked at the importance of being a pragmatic Christian, a Christian who is not only a hearer, but a Christian who is a doer of the word of God. And we looked at the importance of emulating, imitating, and following the patterns of the founder of our faith, and that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because even the word Christian comes from the aspect of following Christ. The aspect of being like Christ, thinking like Christ, walking like Christ, and performing like Christ. And we also looked at the importance of developing Christ-like thinking in every aspect of our lives so that we can be able to think and see things through the perspective of Christ. And this morning, I want us to conclude this topic by talking about the essence of acquiring the character of Christ, the essence of acquiring the character of Christ. The essence of acquiring the character of Christ. God is more important in your character more than the service that you give him. He's interested in developing you, in changing you, more than he's interested in using you to change others. In fact, the number one priority of God in your life is to transform you before you can become a transformer. And so character is a very important aspect of your identity as a pragmatic Christian. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks. Guard your heart with all diligence, because out of it comes out the issues of life. Your heart, your heart is what God is interested with because the nature of your heart determines your character. In our attitude, the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 verse 5, we ought to imitate Christ in every aspect, not only in our thinking but also in the way we carry issues in our hearts. Character is more important. And the best way that you can develop your character so that it can become Christ-like character is by spending time with Christ. Because spending time with Christ is spending time with a mirror. You will be able to see yourself clearly and see the spots, logs, dirt, and abnormalities in your heart. The moment you choose to spend time with Christ, Christ is like a mirror. When you look at Christ, the first thing that you look at 
is yourself. You see the, the, the abnormalities, you see the stains, the spots in you. And the moment you are overwhelmed by his love, just an encounter of Christ makes you to first of all focus on repenting and realigning yourself as far as your walk with God is concerned. Our relationship with Christ helps us, helps us to crave to be like him. When we relate with Christ, we crave to be like him in every way. And in the process, we are challenged to seek Christ always. And in the process, we end up analyzing our hearts, our attitudes, and our life patterns, which helps us to realize how weak, useless, and insignificant we are without Christ. Follow Christ, follow his heart, and your heart will become like the heart of Christ. And in the process, your character will be sharpened, will be refined, will be sorted out so that you can be able to be a blameless person before the eyes of God and before the eyes of men. The story of the Good Samaritan, the parable of the Good Samaritan. What the Good Samaritan exhibited is strong principles. He was a man of character. He was a man of character. And the best definition of character is this. Character is who you are when no one is watching. When that person was alone, he exhibited the highest form of godly character by helping and sorting out his neighbor. In the same, same manner, even if we are told about, if, if, even if we are not told about his religious background, even if we are not told about his belief system, just imagine how powerful we can be if we create a wonderful relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and allow him to sharpen our character. Because even if we are not all about his belief system or his religion, trust me, I want to, uh, and, and this is my own uh, personal thinking, I want to believe that that man that was helped, the man that, that was injured, who was helped, I want to believe that he would have committed his entire life to serving not only that man, but even to follow his ways and his customs because of that simple act of character. We ought to follow the pattern of Christ. How powerful could we be or can we be if we create a wonderful relationship with Christ and give ourselves to Christ fully and submit to him fully and allow him to sort our character. Because the moment he sorts our character, he is the one, he is the one who saved us. So he is powerful and able to sort every little detail in our hearts so that whatever comes out of our lives, whatever comes out of us in form of actions, thoughts, and speech, and even deeds will reflect the character of Christ. We have the possibility of becoming better versions of the Good Samaritan. Why? Because we have Christ in us. We know who Christ is. And at the end of the day, as the Bible says that God does not look at the outward appearance, but he looks at the heart, we will be able to qualify so that we can be able to become agents of change, but only after we have been transformed. This is my prayer, that you will follow, you will pursue Christ to the point where your thinking will become his thinking, his thinking will become your thinking, and the nature of his heart will become the nature of your heart. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we come before you. We love you, we give you praise, and we give you all the glory. Jesus, walk with us. The Bible says that you are tried and tested in every way. And sometimes we are tried and tested. But Lord, remember us. Forgive us. Walk with us. Guide us and protect us, O Lord, so that we can be able to stand firm in the knowledge that you are God. You are Jehovah Jireh. 
our provider. You are, you, 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 you are the one who can be able to sort our character, our issues. You can be able to sort anything that we are going through to the glory and to the honor of your holy name. Where we have walked, where, where, where we have fallen short of your glory, Lord, have mercy on us, walk with us, and may we be people of integrity, men and women of purpose and integrity and transparency and honesty. In Jesus' mighty name, I do pray and believe. Amen and amen and amen. May our good God bless you. May he keep you. And as you purpose to follow Christ and to commit yourself to Christ, may he be found in you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you.